today we are going to just going to introduce you to the basic tabs that we have um, within some details are obviously we'll introduce you to the VBA platform. I just, I, I, I it's important that I, you, you see all the interfaces and how it's all working together uh, at the first shot. And then we'll also be doing the second part that is cleaning uh, data perspective. Obviously this is what uh, is really important for uh, data scientists and anybody who's using Excel in and out very regularly. Apart from this, yes, there are some things that are there within the tabs that I'll also be covering, right? So that's that's the first session that you're going to be doing. Second um, uh, session is going to be on functions. And um, we have another professional uh, called Amlan. He will be taking the next session. So uh, functions, uh, I've listed a few um, categories of functions that we'll be covering. Apart from that, we'll also be doing pivot tables, which again, I will be taking. And then dashboarding and reporting and record and edit macros will be something uh, that we are working on the content on how to uh, put our, put on it. But that's the last topic, which again, Amlan will be top taking, right? So that's what we have in the four, uh, four, uh, two, four sessions. Apart from that, we'll also have a lot of case studies and problem statements to solve, which I will share post uh, today's and uh, today's session and uh, the next session that is functions. Um, uh, next session is, uh, yeah, next session functions. So you get a lot of hands-on work uh, to do, right? So that's the gist in which we uh, are going to start. Okay, so um, I hope we, um, let's uh, then start off. Uh, I hope you all know that uh, we have uh, moved into a very comfortable uh, era where Excel is a lot better when we began first eight year, nine, nine years ago using it, right? That time there were a lot of things which we could not do, but today we could do it. And you're fortunate enough to be in this place where you're getting to learn Excel in this, this matured state, right? So without further ado, um, let, let me just begin with uh, a blank workbook, right? And a workbook is basically defined uh, as a placeholder for sheets which contains uh, rows and columns right and there are limitations of uh, the rows and columns that we have here and as you can note uh, we have roughly around uh, i mean xfd and if you want to know uh, what column it is right if you just write a column function you will see that we have roughly around 1000 uh, 16,384 columns available with us, right? Quite similarly, we have around uh, these many rows, right? Around 10 lakh rows available with, within Excel, right? And you can have multiple sheets uh, within Excel and each of the sheets can be renamed as such, right? So what you're basically seeing is that um, you have an Excel workbook and within it, uh, within that workbook, you have multiple sheets. Within that sheets, you have cells or ranges, right? So we can call this as a cell. If if it is represented with the idea of one comma one, which means row one, column one, right? That is R comma C representation. Let me just enlarge that for you. If it is one comma one or row comma uh, column, that's the representation. That's going to be a cell representation, right? Um, and if it is a ranged represent representation, it's called A3, right? So basically, you you have the column name and the row, right? So that's that's the um, idea in which we have represented, right? So that's that's a range, and this is a cell, right? So let me just do that. That is a cell, right? And this is a range. Now, can you tell me what cells would look like or what range on a, uh, in plural form will look like? Any idea, guys? Yes, that's right. So we have something called as A3 colon A15, right? Let's take a smaller one. Let's take uh, 10. 
right? So what this does, guys, is that if I select A3 and then go to A10, that means I have selected the range A colon uh, A3 colon A10, right? So that is a collection of uh, cells that is available, right? So that's one of the basic uh, areas in which we need to understand the difference between what is a range and a plural range, right? A multiple uh, range. So it can be a singular one or it can be uh, a multiple cells also, right? If we change this to B, what it means it's is basically changing from A to B10. That's a selection that's happening, right? Similarly, in cells, uh, we cannot really do this colon representation. So what we will do is basically say three comma two, uh, three comma one, uh, two. Uh, it will be ten comma uh, two, right? So uh, you will right now will not be uh, referencing this as much, but you will come across this kind of notation when you use Excel VBA, right? So this is just to ensure that you know what is uh, happening between cells and ranges, right? So that's about uh, basic uh, cells and ranges. Uh, any doubts, guys? If you have a doubt, you can just say yes, no, uh, understood this concept, and then uh, we'll move ahead. OK. Which uh, which part, Venkat? Okay, uh, Venkat, uh, we'll not do repeats like this because we have time session. So you can watch the recording. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Anyways, guys, so that's about uh, your ranges. Now, uh, there are a couple of shortcuts that you need to remember, right? Um, and I'm just switching gears in terms of what are the basics you need to know as a as a person, right? So uh, some of the basics that uh, we need to do. So when you want to enter something on the cell, you enter it like this, whatever it is, um, board infinity. Now there is a shortcut uh, that is uh, that's called uh, F2, which basically helps you edit that particular cell, right? Now that's one of the um, that one of, one of the key things to know about it. However, now uh, if I want to, I mean, um, if you want to format this particular cell or any particular number, right? Uh, sorry, any number, right? Uh, I mean, sorry, my fault. So when you enter uh, a text data you will notice that is automatically aligned to the left hand side and uh, something like this is automatically aligned to the right hand side right now um, another thing uh, so this is a text and a string right so we have a text and a, a string right sorry we have a text and then a uh, text or a string And then we have a number, right? So when we have this, you'll see that alignment is left and right. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why this is key to um, any data scientist, because when you're going to get, uh, get into a lot of more details, you're going to see that your data will be divided into numericals and non-numericals, right? And uh, Excel just uh, signifies and gives you the first visual clue uh, by the alignment. However, in the real world, right? Uh, things don't happen uh, always in the way that it should be. So, for example, if I do something like this, of uh, first Jan 2019, right? Uh, I wrote something and then it aligned to the right. So, I wrote a particular non alf non alphabet i mean non numeric data but it aligned to the right can you guess what is happening here is what what i have written here is it a date or it should be a number what is it what uh, what i typed right now is a date okay it's a number or a string 
somebody says string numbers okay it's a number right and why is it a number any guesses guys okay yep so here's the concept guys it although this looks like a text right it is a number and hence the next important topic that you should know is called formatting so if i type a number 0 right aligned which means it's a number but hey can i format this date format this number to a date format and say okay then you get 0 january 1900 this is an interview question guys uh what is the first date on excel and that will be 0 january 1900 the counter for dates starts from 0 january 1900 which re- which is represented by 0 now if i type 1 which means it changes to 1st january to 1900 right now if i reformat this particular data to a general format or a number format right let's show it for general now you will see it's 43466 right now what is formatting like formatting is basically uh putting up some makeup or dressing well and going out right you are the same person right just imagine you are a number but you wear something and then you go out you are formatted or you are looking different uh for going out right so like for example we go out for parties we'll be uh, we'll be wearing something different we go for a uh visit a friend's house will wear something different right we'll go to office will wear something different that's formatting but it doesn't change what you are right inside you who you are is what it is right similarly a cell can hold a particular number or a text but you, what you choose to format and show it as will uh define what the context is so for example i showed you a date which is a number but you can format this to a dollar format right and this suddenly becomes us dollars for 43466 i can rechange this date to a date format right and say okay and this will change it to date again right it's the makeup that is put up on that particular number that defines the context of that particular number right so in formatting uh how will you get into the formatting that is your home tab and in number right so i'm just jumping the gun in this particular concept but is one of the strongest concept that everybody should be aware of how this particular text and uh, numeric thing works cool guys okay any doubts guys quickly yes no okay now now that i've introduced you to the excel platform sheets and then cells right now it's time to for me to introduce to the ribbon now what this ribbon does is basic it is a num it it is a number it is not a number i have put a comma so it become a alpha numeric if i put a dot it will become a number good good observation ruchi right yes and i can reformat this particular thing to be a number right and have a comma separated format right and you will see that it's formatted in this particular way to get you that comma right so that's that's the way we see it right so always look at the format so if i look at this format and go to the number part of it and do whatever with it add decimals or change it into date it's still going to remain 1 comma 1 because it's a text it doesn't know what to do with it right so that's that's really the the core essence there okay there is there are other other confusing things which you will come across also guys i mean a nice point ruchi uh, so if i if i take this date and put a put a, a single colon on front of it it becomes a text 
right? So often you receive dates from systems like SAS, Oracle and all that in this format, right? Then you just have to convert this particular format into the real date format and then use it. And we'll, we'll see some of the examples there. Yep. Cool. Uh, thanks Ruchi for that. Okay. So now we've known some of the basic elements that we should be knowing um, uh, for on Excel, but now let's just uh, as per our um, course structure let's look at all the tabs that are available here right so you have a home tab where you have basically your formatting cut copy paste details guys cut copy paste is like uh, the core of how we do things right i cannot Im uh, imagine how much life would be harder if these paste options that excel has would not be there right so that's one of the things then you have fonts obviously this is very known uh, we have alignment merge and center all of these common things that you see in word or powerpoint we have a number formatting um, uh, in excel which is one of the core essence like if you change it to a dollar or a date and whatever the meaning changes right so it's very important we have conditional formatting format as table we're going to see some of these examples here uh, add insert delete format cells that's that's the area to the tabs i don't know how i can zoom into the tabs mm. uh, hey sadish can you um, i mean i cannot really zoom in let me see if there are some options here I don't have the options really here with me. Okay, okay. Cool, no problem. So let's continue. Um, yeah, so so that, that's about uh, the tabs that are available. And we want to see some of these uh, important options here, like for example, conditional formatting and format as table. We've already seen one option. Uh, and then obviously sort and filter is another thing uh, which is there and apart from that we are also going to see something called as a flash field right so that's one of the things that we'll see we'll be seeing, we'll be seeing. insert tab uh, is something um, it's all visual uh, anything that has to be visual uh, re represented that will be there in the ex in this this particular tab and you have another concept called as pivot table which i'll be taking again which will be a elaborate concept of um, Excel along with chartings, uh, chartings and uh, all of these information like charts, right? This is going to be used for dashboarding and all that thing. And your normal things uh, like inserting smart art and uh, all of that, which you have in your presentation words or whatever it is, right? Then we have slicers, which are for pivot and for tables uh, and some other things which we not, we don't regularly use, right? Page layout uh, really, uh, we we come very less frequently to this unless we have to make a PDF or something like that. But yeah, this we are not going to cover so much in so much in detail, right? Formulas tab is your functions, which is uh, going to be taken by Amran. So we're not going to cover all the concept except we are going to cover this particular name manager concept, right? So I'm going to teach you this one particular concept. Um, yeah, and uh, rest of the options will be covered by Amran, right? Uh, in the data tab is again what our focus will be today now in the data tab obviously since excel is handling data which means there has to be some uh, really good options to use um, uh, uh, use these things right so we have things like get external data which is importing data into excel right uh, get and transform is basically uh, you know you import data from external sources but hey can, is it clean is it is it uh, usable, right? So that's where this particular uh, table helps us use that. Uh, connections is basically you, uh, we use this often in corporates where we connect to databases, um, which is residing on SQL server. And then we basically connect to make a connection to that so that we can refresh whenever there is a new data with that, right? Sort and filter is a concept that we'll be covering. It's called remove duplicates or deduping concepts uh, will be covered here. And all of the data tools here, like flash tool, text to column, remove duplicates uh, will be covered, right? Uh, in what of analysis, I'm going to just cover goal seek and others uh, 
you can you are free to do it right and some of the uh, things here right and i'm going to just just introduce you to the data analytics which is again in further you're going to use it but uh, quite a heavy tab for data analysts right this is where we would idly spend most of our time in uh, apart from home uh, and insert right so these these four home insert formula and data are one of the uh, some of the key tabs that we spend in review is basically when you want to lock your sheets and protect your sheets uh, and don't want uh, don't want others to edit this particular sheet so that's that's one of the important things here view tab uh, basically has um, things like freeze panes which basically helps um, in um, you know visually getting uh, a good view on the data while scrolling right so i'm going to cover one of these examples here right on the right hand side you'll also see something called as a macros which again is a is a vast topic but we can basically have uh, uh, macros options within this tab right but uh, that's just it. that's it right on the developer tab we basically have your visual basic um, window uh, which will basically um, if you click on this visual basic window it will fire up a another uh, window where it will list all the sheets that are available there you can insert a new module write a write a piece of code here write a piece of code here and then start executing um, uh, things or automating things right so it, it's just the way it is right so for example if you want to do some of uh, uh, two numbers so you just say sub uh, my sum right so and then um, let's say x comma y and my sum is equal to x plus y right so i just wrote a sum fun um, sorry sum function right and then i can basically reuse this particular data here and say one comma four and then i get that particular output right so bva is basically a place where you can write a piece of code and then reuse within yeah so the developer tab basically has a lot of form controls there are two types of controls uh, this is called the form controls and the activex controls this is done primarily without any vba and activex controls require some amount of vba before you can start doing it right so uh, these are some of the basic things that are uh, getting used uh, while we do things like for example you know hey i want to do a small selection things like uh, you know cities something like that right uh, so you can just insert a small form control um sorry and then you basically can uh, give give a particular uh, the 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 range that is available there and then give a cell link right so basically what happens is when you select something right uh, a number is there then you can reuse this number to create dashboards and all that thing right so uh, small things like that which basically helps you create uh, dashboards not just static uh, reports right so these kind of things are available within this place right so that's all the tabs that we basically have and um we're going to attack some of them um uh, step by step um yeah so these are the tabs and uh, for those who don't have the developer tab uh, the way to get it is you go to the options uh, window here go to the uh, customize ribbon it's called the ribbon here and you'll see that all the things that are there within this place have been listed and are uh, ticked here so this developer tab will be unticked right so if it's unticked what will happen is it will be not visible right so for your all of you most mostly that will not be visible you can go to the options tab customize ribbon and check this particular option right uh, so that will be visible quite similarly on the data tab these things will not be available so you can go to the options again and go to add in section right these are some external add-ins which uh, attach to this particular software 
um, excel and then uh, enhance its capabilities so those things will be available here you can just say go to manage and ch check all the add-ins that you want to really use right so that way you get uh, these add-ins okay yeah so that's that's really the basics uh, or the uh, you know window in which uh, you'll have to learn excel and heavily it's skewed around using home insert uh, formulas and data right so that's there and the next uh, load is basically on the developer type so that's your uh, entire portfolio now switching gears to uh, the next part of uh, excel um, and that is called uh, a concept of uh, referencing right so um, and uh, 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 fixing right so referencing and fixing so what does that mean right so let me just uh, open up a small file which i can do that mm. let me just say that okay so this file should be good enough for referencing okay anyway so we have a file where we have some some travel expenses uh, of the first quarter right and that will be meaning jan feb march and then we have san francisco uh, all the all the details uh, and then we have uh, total average highest and lowest and and quantity and so on uh, so forth right now uh, let me just get rid of all these things right and let's uh, do this particular thing right anyway so here's what we'll so here's what uh, here's what we will what we'll be doing uh, so what we'll be doing here is uh, in terms of reference right we know we're going to do sum of a range right so when we say sum of a range i'll basically select it from b6 to b12 right and then close this bracket now what this does is it selects the range and when i drag this particular thing towards the right hand side you'll see that it it basically changes the range from one place to another place right uh, what if i said f4 and i'm, I'm going to explain what this means in a while so when i did f4 here and drag this particular uh, cells uh, beside here you will see that the ref the reference that we have to those particular cells will not change that that will be fixed right so that's that's one of the natures of what this referencing concept is right um your your cell copying right and what i did here was basically uh, do a copying um uh, cop uh, i just copied the uh, the cell the formula from one place to another cell and i can also simply copy and paste these details also right but since it is a fixed formula it's not going to change right however if i want to change this to the normal way and ensure that everything else is getting some i'll do this copy or drag it and then get these details right so that's the first thing that you need to know the second thing that you need to know is the types of uh, the types of um, you know uh, fixing we can do on a particular thing right so for example if i say equal to e6 right that is the first way of writing it right the second way of doing the same thing is if i say f4 it basically fixes both your column and your row now you will know what this is in a while but let me just show you what are the uh, other type right so this is f no uh, i mean this is just uh, when you press equal to you will get this this is f4 one time time one and you can do four times of it right so so if i do f4 uh, is equal to e6 i'll say f4 once twice then what's happening sorry what's happening here is that 
this is fixing both row and column right this is fixing only row next one is fixing only column and then this one is becoming getting back to normal right so that's how this particular thing works now if i do this again so f for one two and three now this time the column got fixed right so that's what uh, that's what happens there. now again if i do equal to uh, and do this i do f for once twice thrice and four times and you'll notice that it gets back to this particular stage right so uh, when you do this guys uh, keep in mind that this will define how your logic is built on on extracting a certain thing right so uh, let me just take a few examples and i want you all to first uh, give me an idea of what i what kind of fixing i need to do right uh, okay so here's the first challenge that i pose to you right i want to know i want to know what what is the percentage of san, san francisco's uh, contribution to the total expense here right so if i have a total expense of say 94 94452 but i just want to know what is the contribution what is the percentage contribution of san francisco right and this is this question is not for those people who know excel intermediately for those who do not know at all right what are you going to type here such that it will help me get the percentage then percentage would mean 14000 divided by 494452 any 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 ideas guys any ideas guys yes that that will be the answer but how will you do it here yes okay e6 by e14 e6 by e14 um yes okay now that 100 thing we'll have to get rid of because in excel what you can do is you can format the number to whatever thing that you want right so you need not do the multiplication you simply do it and then format it to whatever format you want right so that's really an advantage okay good so i got this now i want not only for this particular uh, san francisco but i want for all of them so how do i get it any ideas guys and uh, good one karan and uh, pratik so how do i do it for all of them now okay drag correct so if i do drag downwards this is the problem kiran kumar um did it yes subhjyoti yes that's right we have to fix it so any questions guys what is the mistake here guys i guess most of you have already figured it out but any anybody did not understand what's happening here you see that some of these things are getting error some of the things are getting over 100% which should not be idly that thing so who did not understand this particular concept of what's happening here okay everybody's got it cool so that's the f4 part so if you do f4 which means it's going to fix that or else yes yes we shall we are we, i'm telling that so just watch this guys so if i did e6 by this normal way right what's happening is not only this value is shifting but it's also shifting the below reference point right and ideally i want this to be here right similarly i want this guy not to shift down but here similarly i want this guy not to shift down but to be here right so instead of you know that reference going down 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 what we can do is 
uh, fix it like this. If it is like this, we can just say F4 once and it fixes there. And then when I drag it down, it basically gives me what the percentage contribution for each of that particular state is, right? And it will be measured up to this particular as a reference, right? So if you see, if you see this blue one will keep moving down, but the E14 one will not move down, right? So that's how this particular uh, uh, formula works. No, it doesn't uh, uh, cause this problem. If you do multiply 100, often I have seen that we end up inflating certain numbers, right? So what will what will happen is when you basically have this not formatted in the into the um, uh, percentage format, uh, it will cause problems for Excel in inflating the number. I'll give you a simple example here. So for example, 100. I want 10% of 100, right? So if I say into 10%, right? Uh, into 10%, what happens is Excel considers this percentage and then multiplies it, right? So this is one simple trick of how we use uh, percentages within Excel, right? So it's uh, it's it's much more better you do formatting, right? Um, uh, formatting rather than multiplying 100, right? Uh, remember, Excel is, uh, Sandesh, Excel is trying to make uh, life easy for users. So adding another uh, into 100 every time we do percentages is going to be a redundant effort, which is why formatting is the way to go, right? Okay, you can tell your senior that this is the re re real way to go, certified by Microsoft. <laughs> okay anyway so we used to have that sort of a problem in the older versions which is now rectified on this show that's that's really the key okay now uh so yeah so that's that's really how how this particular referencing works right now let me get you one more challenge right so if you've not nearly cracked this but let's try another challenge here, right? So I have one. Now guys, I can do drag like this and I'm gonna do some some tricks, which is, I'm not gonna introduce the topic, but I'm gonna do some tricks um, and very, very helpful tricks. So when I drag it, you'll see that some something like this will come up and I can say fill series, which will fill the numbers for me, right? Similarly, I can do one and 1.5 uh, sort of a thing and then if I select it and drag it down, it's going to know I have to increment increment by 0.5 and it's going to do it for me, right? But I just want two, right? So I'm going to do that and increment till five. Anyway, so we've got this number series guys and here's the output that I'm expecting from this by writing a formula here, right? And that's going to be one, one multiplied uh, one, one times one is one, one times two is two, three, sorry, three, uh, four and five, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five. But in the next row, I want two into one, that is two, four, six, eight, ten, right? And so on. And the last cell that will be there, it will be having 25. Now, can you write a function? Can you write a formula that will help me get this particular numbers? Any ideas, guys? Those who use Excel already, please do not answer. Let the folks that are just learning wreck their brain in getting this output. Hint, it's the concept that we recently covered. So how do we do it? Any ideas, guys? Obviously, we will begin by multiplying this into this, but then what? Lock B1, okay, I locked B1. Do you think this will give us the answer?
Okay, let's try that. So if I drag it that side, and I can do it drag down also. That's a drag. Right? Another shortcut, guys, is you select this entire cell, control D, control R will fill the cells. Right? Again, I can select the entire cell, control D, control R will fill the entire cells. It will copy it here and there. Right? So this is what's the problem. Right? This guy is following us. It shouldn't. It should be here. Plus, this guy should keep changing, but it's not changing. I should get 25 here, but I'm not getting 25. So where's the problem? Okay, no locking. No locking. This is what will happen. We'll end up with a hugely enormous number. Is this big number? So what's happening? It's multiplying the up and side one, up and side one, up and side one. Right? It would be ideally three and three, but it's following that. Log A2. Yeah. Again, same problem, guys. Right, this is still not going to solve the problem. If you lock both of them together, remember the cells are not going to change, right? So it's going to be continuously one. Yeah, now we're getting closer. Yes, so I need to lock. Yeah, A2 fix column. That's right. A2, I need to fix the column. Right. For B1, remember B1 should not go down. It can go left. So what does that mean, guys? So what should we, how should we fix B1? Remember, I don't want this to follow me down. Correct. So we fix the row there. Right. So that's how we fix it. Right. Now, if I drag it and drag it down, you'll see these guys are following each other. Right. So that's the right way of doing it. So remember, guys, there are three types of formattings that you can do. I mean, uh, fixings that you can do. And each time you press F, uh, F4, you basically uh, fix both the rows and columns, then you fix row, and then you fix column, and then it comes back to normal, right? So that's a really, really important uh, functions to uh, do this particular thing, guys, right? It's very, very important uh, for uh, working along, right? Similarly, um, you know how to, the, how to do the sum, sums and all that thing, right? Um, uh, there are other things that you can also do with this particular thing, right? Hey, what's the percentage of each month's contribution to this particular total, right? So it will be something like a uh, B6 uh, divided by uh, this particular this particular guy and say F4, right? And you format this again as a uh, as a percentage, and you do this, right? So that way you're getting uh, the percentages. Yeah, right so a lot of a lot of these uh, fixing uh, references you will be uh, getting in your problem statements a lot and uh, just ensure that you remember this f4 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 uh, really really well right now uh, the last thing that i want to cover on the referencing topic is uh, in specifics with what it's going to mean uh, for you to look at rows and columns, right? So, um, how many of you have studied coordinate geometry? How many of you have studied coordinate geometry, guys? Okay. I guess everybody has studied. 
Yes. So we're going to do some amount of uh, ideas around what the coordinate geometry is. Okay. So let's take the coordinate geometry reference. Right. So this is your line. Let's start another search line. Right. Now, if this is your uh, positive x. Right, uh, this will become negative x. Right, if this is your positive y, then this will become your negative y. Right, so what's happening here is that obviously, if you want to reference a point here, it will be basically 1, 1. Um, the concept here will be what uh, minus minus 1 comma 1 the reference will be minus 1 1 comma 1 here you'll get uh, 1 comma minus 1 and this will be um, minus 1 comma minus 1 right so that's a ref that's a that's the way that the representations go with this particular Is it okay now, guys? Ashutosh? Hello? Yeah, okay. Sorry, guys. Good. Cool. Thank you. Anyway, so, so what I was saying, this is a, your coordinate geometry concept. But imagine Excel, right? Excel basically resides in this particular part of your um, uh, in coordinate geometry and uh, uh, fortunately both of them are positives here right so it's going to be positive positive and in sorry I'm not going to do that thing but if this is going to be uh, this way it's going to be positive columns or just say columns right and this side it's going to be rows and it's going to be positively marked right so this way it's columns and this way it's rows so that way you know what your uh, cell is right so uh, so this cell becomes 1 comma 1 like i showed you earlier this is 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 and so on this is 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 and so on uh, this is 1 comma 1 comma 1 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 and so on right so that's how this particular uh, thing works right if i had to represent it in a row comma format I will simply use a row function um, and I will concatenate this with a comma and give a column function right to give one comma one representation that we are looking for right so if I do this sorry and if I control do uh, do this you will see I'm getting all these references that uh, that I have I have to work with right so that's that's really the trick uh, within which we work with right so uh, guys just to this particular uh, scenario any doubt any doubts right so how this referencing works right in in particular Excel. okay thank you guys okay Cool. So you've done this now. Uh, now that I'm like imparted all the basics that I can think of in terms of fixing and referencing, we will then move on to uh, a certain concept, um, a certain concept called as uh, the style stylings here, right? Now the stylings, um, I'm going to cover concepts really, really quickly from now on because you you know now what what things are happening there. Right, so let me just open up something called as formatting numbers. Let's see what I have. Okay, no, I don't think so. This is a good one. Let's see if I can do this. No, end up opening the same file again and again. Uh, yeah, 
let's do this. Okay, anyways, guys, so we have a set of numbers available with me here, right? Uh, let me just delete this. And let's call this states, right? So we basically have a certain amount of cells here and I can clear all the formats available here right from this clear format. Now, the first concept in styles I want to cover is a format as table. Now, often when you have handed, uh, you, you're going to handle data, right? Uh, things are going to uh, work out. Uh, you're going to do a lot of mathematical operations and all that with this particular type of data, right? So if I just expand this data, if I want to sum of June, what I'll do is I'll say sum of June and then close the bracket and I get, get this particular sum, right? So when I get this sum, uh, it, it, it is a fixed uh, formula here. But here, if I can add few more rows to this, right, from this thing, and then let's say we can call this some, some other state that we have, right? And some four more states I've added. What it doesn't take into account is that it's not including this particular cells, right? So there is some level of intactness missing in this particular sum uh, uh, someplace, right? So what, what will happen is we will uh, introduce a concept called as, so I'm just going to delete those rows here. Sorry, deleted them already. Yeah, and then I remove that sum files there. Uh, I'm going to format this as a table. Now, when I do format as a table, you'll notice that you get this design tab and you now have uh, a, an object called, um, what is it, table, and then you can format this particular data in such a way, uh, for, format this table and give it a name, right? So when I say, uh, there's a table name for it. I can just give it to give this data as um, a sales data or something like that, right? So when you do that, you'll see that it will be available within this particular list, right? So this is this is the entire selection of the data. Now when I select this data, and then I say sum of June, you'll see that formula is written in a very different way. It's called sales data. The table name and the column name within square bracket is mentioned here, right? So if I just change this to May, you'll see I'll get a sum of May. And if I change this to Feb, I'll get Feb sum, right? Isn't it a much more better to uh, see it rather than seeing a range, right? So what we're trying to do here is that we're giving a range a particular name, right? And then uh, we are sort of summing it up. Now, Sum is, uh, note that the sum is um, 10,773, uh, 10, but here let's add some more states, right? So I added four, uh, four more state and call it state one, two, four or whatever it is. And you'll see that my sum has changed and expanded to this particular row, right? So it's automatically taking care of that calculation, right? So that's where this format as table really comes in handy, right? And uh, very, very important concept, guys. You will often receive data with this particular thing. And I often see a lot of people convert this particular back to a range, right? Uh, and then um, use this particular format. And if you see that formatting change has made it something like C2 to C30, which again, if I add certain rows, it's not going to take in account, right? So it's really important that, uh, you know, if you want to not have any mistakes in your type of data and something like that, please use the name manager, right? I mean, uh, the format as uh, table, right? So that way you're going to keep things intact. So let me just format this as table again. And unfortunately it doesn't re, uh, re bring back that formula. So you'll have to delete this and then do that again. Right, so I've got this information and uh, it sort of helps now to look at things in, in particular, in, in perspective, right? So format as table, uh, really, really important options for you if you want to make, uh, you want to have some accuracy in your data.
Okay, so that's uh, format is stable, and obviously there is a lot of usages for this particular thing. I'm not going to go into so many details, but that's the primary usage. And uh, if you select this table, and if you're having a design time up here with table and name and all that thing, you know this particular thing has formatted as a table. And there are some other quick and handy options. For example, you don't want to do the sum written by yourself here. What you can do is you can say total row and then sort of gives a total row. You can say first column branded and the last column branded, right? So that way you can brand some of these things. And you also can basically choose what you want in the below output here, right? So for example, by default here, it says sum. You can say maximum, uh, maximum for all of these uh, things or minimum or, uh, you know, um, count or any, any of these uh, uh, things that you can think of, right? So usually you keep it at one particular way, but yeah, uh, very handy functions for you if you have this uh, particular total row. If, if you remove it, it's gone, but yeah, very handy if you want to uh, use this concept, right? So that's that's format as table, and uh, uh, which is a really really handy concept. Okay, moving on to the next topic. Now conditional formatting is basically answering questions with how many of these rows, um, uh, uh, you know, the sales that information that we have here, how many of them um, um, meet a certain criteria, right? So let's for example, I want to I want to uh, identify all the states that in Jan. Uh, uh, you know, had a sales probably a bit less than uh, 200, right? So if I select this particular column here and say conditional formatting, say highlight cells uh, less than two, 200 and say, okay, you'll see I can easily filter on those uh, states using a number filter and then identify all the states that did uh, less amount within uh, Jan, right? So that's when we are doing it. And similarly, if I take this format painter, format it on Feb, and you'll see that uh, it'll automatically apply the same conditional formatting uh, that we had within the next uh, cell, right? And it, it's defined, right? Similarly, you can do the same. For all of them, if you double click on the format printer, you can do it twice, right? And uh, get this information, right? So a really handy, uh, handy option to uh, select, get some highlights within the data and uh, sort of keeps you um, organized and visually appealing, um, giving the user, whoever you're sending the report to, uh, a visual reference of what to look for within that particular table, right? So that's that's really what uh, conditional formatting is. Um, and obviously, uh, the other option that we have here is called um, format as uh, cell styles, and this does not have any magic associated with, with it. However, it, it makes your reports look really, really beautiful if you used it in that particular format, right? For, so for example, I, I use this particular format, right? Uh, as a sum, and then I can use another similar range format to make it look uh, beautiful, right? So that's that's really where these, uh, these things fitting and um, obviously a lot uh, helpful here. So just take a quick pause here and uh, um, uh, take, a, take any questions or doubts you may have. I'm not. I'm not covering all the options available here, but just any doubt so far on the concepts there. Okay. Cool. Anyway, so condi conditional formatting. Apart from the highlight rule, there are other so many other different rules available here. I uh, want you all to explore. Um, yes, yes, Sadesh, please go ahead. Explore some of these options here but this is primarily to give a visual reference. Yes, Sandesh, go ahead, please. Yeah.
so if you do it if you if you do it like this that is selecting the entire column then it will be applied on the entire column right but if i just do it to this particular limitation then it's going to be within this particular if you add another row it is automatically form it will automatically format it but anything below that will not apply this rule right so it's it's going to be only on the table there cool so that's that's that now um so another thing that i would really really want to show in this particular thing is that um deleting right and deleting uh, cells within excel is a really really complicated issue and one of the examples that i can think of right now is this particular example so let's say i want to say delete this particular two two cells so if i say delete you will see deleting is not so easy in excel right you say shift cells up which is the right choice you have shift cells uh, sorry left uh, up entire row entire column and sometimes the entire row is selected so if that is selected what will happen is it will it will delete two columns from the table which is a really really uh, painful way to uh, deal with again right so if you delete two rows there which means some data is getting deleted right uh, so if you say delete here right what what is the right way to do is say let's say shift cells up right so if you say shift cells up what will happen is this things uh, these cells move up right so let me just show you an example so if i say this delete as a shift cells up you'll see that this guy has moved up right and uh, uh shift cells left if i delete this particular cells and say shift cells left you'll see that these cells will sort of move inside here which is again really a, really really a bad practice which means the best way to delete this numbers is clear everything clear all from this that way no lift up no shift up and the data is also gone right so you have to take a judicious call on how you're deleting stuff right and um, um uh, in clearing formats and all that thing right i i would all thumb rule here is that if you have data within that particular sheet either this side or down ways do not delete always form a clear and format right so one of the key mistakes i see all of my most of my team members doing is this particular scenario where they just deleting stuff left and right which imp impacts the data right so that's there inserting again uh, you can say insert and it will insert a column if you say insert here it's going to insert a column here and you you can basically uh insert the data and it will be part of the table which is really a good thing clear cells shortcut so i am not i am not a big shortcut guy but if you want to learn shortcuts if you press alt right it will give you all these menu right and uh, unfortunately it just goes to q only right uh, it's not going up to here but yeah it's a q no oh sorry it can be alt so it's the home tab so if i go to home tab you have this particular options then e and then a right so that will be clear on right so if i have something here and then something like this so it should be alt h e a that's the shortcut Shall I repeat once more? If you just press Alt once and leave it, it will give you this menu. Then you go to H, which again reopens these things. Then you go to E, and then A. Right. So that's how you do it. If you repeat, if you keep repeating these things, Alt H E A will become a lot faster. But you have to remove remember all these. says the more you use it the more you'll know, know it i'm not more of a shortcut guy so i don't use so many shortcuts <laughs> yeah use few shortcuts 
but not too many shortcuts. <laughs> okay, so that is um, on this particular thing, guys. Now, um, one more concept I just wanted to uh, cover. I mean, some of the concepts uh, I'm not covering here. It's on purpose. You can learn that it's intuitive, but some of the important things that are, I need to cover, uh, it's what I'm doing, right? Okay, so here's one of the cases that uh, you will come across, right? So sometimes what happens is, you know, you have certain data missing within the table, right? So I have certain rows missing, right? Uh, and what I want to do is basically uh, delete all these rows that are missing, right? And there are multiple ways to do it. I can simply select uh, uh, this and select blanks and then delete this thing right so delete when i say delete here i will do delete row for such that all of these entire rows are deleted right now there's another option that is also available right you select this entire column right and say go to special right and say select blanks right so when it select blanks it basically selects these certain items which i can then say delete right and say delete rows which basically deletes the rows within that particular selection whichever has blank rows right so really really important uh, function not many of the excel users really use it so uh, i would invite you to basically start using this go to special whenever this scenario comes right and trust me these kind of scenarios come a lot whenever you are exporting data from sfdc Oracle, uh, SAP, right? You're going to get a lot of data from different data sources, and this handling blanks will be become one of the major things that you uh, do, right? So that's that's really uh, the options that are available here. Apart from that, uh, the last concept that I want to cover on this tab is called the flash fill. Now, um, many of you who work on Excel intermediate users also will find this very very interesting so for example you have something called as a full name right so for example let's say aditya the way uh, rahul date sandesh patka right so raj narzuka I skipped Kiran Kumar because he has a long name, so I wanted to be short. <laughs> anyway, so I want to extract the first name and the last name within this thing. Right? So the first name, obviously, <laughs> Sharmaji. Okay, let's put Sharmaji also. Okay, and obviously there are some names which would be also like this. Um, Raj Kumar Rao. And some have a single name, let's see. So let's see what happens with these guys, right? So I want to extract this particular um, first names with it. Uh, intermediate users, first I want you all to answer this question of how do you get this first name here any ideas guys i just want to extract the first name here text split yes that's one of the options left function yes both are right answers Yeah, yeah, that that's also that's that's right. So with left function, yeah, yeah, text to column and left function. That's the right, really a good way to do it, right? So we're going to learn some of the string functions to do it, uh, and we're going to also cover text to uh, text text to column also. But for now, I just want to cover flash fill before we move to text to column. Anyway, so the the this way is really really uh, very easy. It's called machine learning doing the work for you. So when I say Aditya Rahul, 
it automatically predicts what the next things to be and i say enter it automatically fills it that's flash fill working for you guys it automatically identifies what needs to be done and then it automatically gets this for you right and then it predicts right i if it doesn't predict so well and it doesn't do it you say flash fill sorry flash fill and then it fills it for you right except the first name it doesn't really know what to do so obviously you have to uh, guide it here okay and it's it flash fill is so fast so basic thing is you say aditya right press enter say rahul and it will automatically predict what it needs to be doing right say enter and it flash fills this information for you really handy guys right tandava sandesh really handy thing guys right okay now it will come yes uh, it it does come in the latest versions of excel right so it's really helpful and it's uh, previously those who have used excel they really know you right some things like uh, a a a b b b c c c right something like this would take a hell of a work to extract but now if i can easily do it by this right so it automatically gets these details for me with, within this particular uh, things right so uh, very very useful guys uh, your some some of the old excel users don't really know this option so those who are learning this particular thing they are going to be definitely in big advantage when you are using this right so go sh show off these skills <laughs> whenever you are there right and trust me guys this has saved a lot of time for me in doing basic things which idly had to be done through left function and all that right so really really useful cool anyway so moving gears to another concept that we uh, come across a lot let me move this so text to column so the other way that we do this particular thing is on the data tab and i'm going to begin with the text to column since we are in the same topic i select this uh, data here and i want to basically divide this data into two uh, full name and uh, last name right so what i can do is i can say text to column right and i can say delimited and delimited would mean that any special character exist between what you're trying to separate and all that thing the next step you'll be able to see that so you have different options available here and for this case we have space as an option right so we say space and say next um and and say finished right so what this does is basically it takes each of the space as a delimiter and then it divides it divides the data into different uh, columns right the only disadvantage is that if you have um three names such as this you need to know what is happening there right so that way you'll when you are able to identify it uh, you are going to able, you are able to get uh, this particular information right that way right so um you need to keep be mindful about that but yeah that's how text to column is used right so text to column is basically used to divide a certain amount of data into certain uh, nature right so there's another thing that uh, i want you all to know uh, is that text to column can also be used for dates and this is one simple trick which i really really love right so when you have data from sources like uh, sap oracle and all that the dates usually will come and come in in this particular format so let me just type that format for you uh, so it's like um let's say random between Forty thousand to fifty thousand. Right, I want to format this as date. That right, this is formatted as date. I just want to 
make it a short format. Okay. Control shift three is a much more better format. So I just use a sh shortcut called uh, Control shift three. So I have this date. Now I'm going to copy and uh, so I've written some formulas here, guys. So if I do copy and paste special values, you're going to see that it it basically has some random dates, but uh, it it's in it, it's the date format, right? So but what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully sell select this and make it into text right so if i add a colon it converts it into text right so it's it's all into text now so what i can do is i can go to the data tab say text to column keep going next right and say next in this particular tab is where the magic is right so uh, what happens is you can say state selection here and you can tell what the format in is in this particular uh, date, right? So if, if I say it's DMY, it doesn't send it's DMY, and when you say finish, it converts it into a date, right? So text to column is used in this nature where you are basically able to take something and uh, take a date uh, which is not a date, you know that it's a date, you can uh, do text to column and then convert it into dates, right? So I'll just repeat the step once more. What you can do is if um, first you need to identify whether it's a date or no. So if you say control one, right, or go to the home sheet and say uh, format here, right? Uh, if you choose general, ideally a number should be showing here or numbers you will be uh, seeing. If it's not a number, which means it's a text and you know that visual cue, it's a left aligned, so it's text, which means this is a date, which is not in a date format. So I need to go to the data tab, text to column, next, next, and say DMY as a format and say finish. Right? That will convert the non-date into dates. And then if you recheck this information by pressing control one uh, and going to the general, you'll see that a number will appear versus uh, that particular thing that is there, right? So that's text to column for you guys. Uh, any doubts so far, guys, on this particular scenario? Okay. Cool. So we're going to really quickly, it's called random between. It's called random between. There are two of these functions. One is random between and one is rand. So rand basically generates a random number from zero to one. And a rand between takes a whole number, right? So you can say minimum zero and then maximum any number that you set. And it's going to get you a um, random number, right? And each time you do something, the numbers will change. Right, so it's a volatile function. Its work is to generate random numbers whenever something happens on the sheet, right? So usually what I do is I copy it and then say pay special values, which then converts the function into just values so that next time when I type something, it doesn't really change the values there, right? So that's a uh, usage when we want to generate some random numbers within that. Okay, guys, so that's... Um, on the data tab, we basically covered text column. Now we are going to do, we covered already flash fill. Uh, I'm going to do, do remove duplicates and something that uh, you might have gotten access to and some of my videos are already available on this, on the content editx platform that you have access to. And I'm going to use the same file uh, that I use usually in my session. Let me see where that is. Okay, where did I put that data? 
Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, Rahul. So basically, what happens is, if you do a random number here, and this is a pay special option, guys. So, so if I do something here, it keeps changing. So if you don't want to change, copy and then say pay special values, right? That way, it changes and it doesn't have that formula once there. Okay. Pay special, yes. We'll come to that. I knew that question will come somewhere there, but we'll come to that, Ruchi. So uh, you'd be happy to know that Excel has a lot of paste options. So if I do this and pay special, you'll see that these many paste options are there, right? I'll really quickly show you one of the paste. I mean, let's just cover it so that it's easier for me to move. Okay, anyway, so, so look at this uh, data, guys. So I have certain uh, data available with me. And uh, let's say, for example, I want to um, divide this by 10, just for random sake, right? So uh, I, I want to divide this particular uh, thing by 10, right? So what I can do is, um, I can take this 10, copy it, right, and say pay special, right, and I can say, I can, I can do an operation with it, right, so I can say divide it by 10 and say, okay, you'll see that the numbers will be divided by 10, right, so that's paste for you. Similarly, as you can notice, uh, I have pay special which basically uh, can add, subtract, divide, and all that thing, right? And um, it can also skip blanks if there are some blanks within the data and, and not paste within that thing, right? Similarly, I can copy this. I mean, let's say I can copy these values, say paste special, and transpose this value. So when I transpose, it basically takes it from this and pastes it like that, right? So that's... Um, Pay special. Uh, no, so clear, clear format is Ruchi for a very different purpose. It removes the value within cell. But copy paste is something that you 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 are taking some. Uh, it's like you're taking water from one bowl and taking it to another bowl, right? The the information will not disappear anywhere, but it will be pasted uh, really nicely in a format that you really want, right? So that's that's very special for you. And there are so many other options. Uh, the options that I regularly use um, are these. So uh, where is that? Yeah, so I have this sum uh, one, right? Um, and then I have formats available with me, right? So if I want to, I have this formats available with me. And let's say I, I have, have something that I want to copy and paste on top of these things, right? Um, so things like, um, let's say I did a sum function here, right? And then I'm copying this and I paste this on top of it, although it gets the number that I want, but the formatting disappears. So what I can do is I can copy and then I can say paste special I can say just the formulas. I don't want to paste any other details. I just want to paste the formula. So when I say that, what it does, it, it retains the formatting and just paste the some details that are there, right? I can just do it again. I can simply say paste and paste special, and you can have a direct option from, for you here also. It's called this one, formula, paste formulas. And if I do that, it just paste the formulas doesn't copy the formatting, right? Sometimes you can do copy and then paste special and you can just say uh, paste the formats only, right? So when you say paste the formats, it just paste the format and doesn't leave anything else, right? Quite similarly, uh, so this is where I can clear, right? This is, I don't want anything in that cell, so I clear it, right? 
Now, another thing that you can do is let's say I have this cell uh, thing, right? I can copy it. I can say paste special and say column width, which will basically copy and paste the column width, right? So, I mean, paste special is a really good option when you are trying to copy something and trying to paste uh, it to a destination or within the same place. Uh, uh, it'll be really, really helpful. Okay, guys. So um, don't get too disheartened. Peer special is really, really a talent to use. So there are a lot of options, a lot of variations. You're going to discover this a lot. But just remember, you have a plethora of options in pay special. Um, and uh, I, we always have these jokes uh, in, in our data science industry where we, th we speak about, you know, uh, doing things like copy paste, right? So if you're master in copy paste, you are doing good as a data science guy, right? So <laughs> just a joke, but yeah, all we do is copy paste, but there is a lot of science to copy paste. Okay, moving on, uh, we have uh, just uh, quite some time left and some more topics to cover. So we have done that, uh, remove duplicates. Uh, remove duplicates is what I wanted to cover. So Let's just quickly get on to remove duplicates and then we're going to move on to the next concept. Um, the first example. So here's the thing, guys. Um, let me just do that. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. Uh, what is remove duplicates? Remove duplicates is a way to find uh, what are the unique number of records within a particular uh, column, right? So for example, I have product names with me. Uh, you can just ignore the table, but here, just look at some of the data that I have. It's transaction data uh, and there's a customer ID and he purchased certain details, certain products, right? So within this data, I wanna know what are the distinct type of product names. So what I can do is I can copy this guy and uh, paste it here and say data remove duplicates, right? It's the data tab, remove duplicates. We just run the data tools here and say, okay. And you will see that only four different products are there that are available within this transaction table, right? So that's how you know um, you're, going to, uh, you're going to use remove duplicates for, right? And some of these options are available on my YouTube channel and on the, on the Ednext platform that you have uh, just have a look at these remove duplicates. Uh, there's a lot of science to how this remove duplicates work and um, it's really helpful, right? So just to further this and how this is useful is let's say, uh, if I wanna find out what are the sales, uh, what is the profit amount by each of the product, right? I can simply just say uh, sum ifs and you wanna learn all of this, don't be too bothered about this, right? So. I'm going to go to this and I'm going to, I want to set this profit amount, right? So it's going to be table one and profit amount, right? Comma, I want table one uh, and I want the product name, comma, I go back to my data and I want this particular guy, right? So close the bracket, you will see that what I'm trying to, what I got from here is the total sales by each of this product names, right? So if I remove the duplicates, I'm able to do a lot and try to get um, get some information out of this particular scenario, right? So that's remove duplicates for you, where basically you're trying to take some data and try and get a unique number of uh, values that are present within that particular column right now. This is only useful when you have repeated values within a column Anything such as customer ID will when if, even if you do remove duplicates What will happen is all of them are unique and you'll find that no duplicate will be removed from this particular table, right? And to date guys remove duplicate has been one of the most widely used functions uh, I did I deal with a lot of customer data and marketing data and there's no time where I have not used remove duplicates uh, to check, verify, see the product, see the unique customers uh, and all of these things, right? So it's a very important function and I invite you to uh, watch all of these uh, 
uh, things again right so uh, in the interest of time there are so many things um, i can cover but i'm going to cover uh, sorin filter next data validation and all that is uh, is, is a primary very secondary thing so i'm going to skip some of these things some of these things i'm going to skip and i'm going to do um, basically sorin filter which is uh, one important thing that we need to master as well right so uh, take it with me guys i mean um it's it's not a very uh, it it's not a don't think that this is a very easy concept sort and filter has a lot of details and i'm going to show you one of the examples also but first let me just show you what is uh, filter right so control shift l is a shortcut to turn on the filters and then basically check uh, our data based on certain criteria so uh, for example i work on a work with uh, a lot of countries so i usually have a lot of filters working uh, there with me right so if i say direct it basically selects all the rows that has direct i can also say unit sold greater than a certain amount let's say greater than 100 say okay and i get all the customers that has uh, greater than um, 100 uh, uh, sold unit sold right so these are the way to filter uh and sort is basically used to take criteria and uh, and sort this particular thing right so for example uh let's say what's the uh, what's the you know product um uh, um let's say oh uh, let's say one example okay so let's take this uh, example uh what is the maximum um you know sales amount sold uh, to a customer in 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 a sales channel right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh sales channel as a option and then i'm going to take sales amount as another one and i'm going to say largest to smallest say okay which will basically give me the highest sales amount by a particular customer by a particular customer um uh on the top right so if you see direct the maximum that you have will be uh 23803 right so if you keep scrolling down you will see there's an online channel and the first one that occurred is 3016 which is the highest soul within that particular um uh, thing right so if i if i take this particular information right and this particular information just copy it to the next tab right and i say remove duplicates right now i just want to remove duplicates on the sales channel and say okay you will see there will be four duplicates um uh i mean it's four rows left and each of the rows will hold the value which has a maximum sales within that particular channel for a customer right so i i can even get the uh customer information to know who that customer is um and as you can know as you can see this is an outcome of a remove duplicates and sort combination right so i can just uncheck custom uh, customer name and sales amount and say okay you'll see i'll get three customers uh, that bought highest amount in each of these categories right so really it depends on the question that uh, people ask but that's how you do remove duplicates within an uh, within a particular uh, data set and um, obviously um there's a lot of science on how you can sort and filter and then uh, do remove duplicates right so uh, really really important concept guys um, um so just see the videos that are there on edinex and further it right so all i'm trying to do is get you all of these uh, concepts uh, small small pockets of concepts within this data so that you know very well how to use these things right so that's that